hi today we are going to discuss about the gravitation so introduction to gravitation why does an apple fall down instead of going in upward direction why do the raindrops fall on earth we observe that all things in this earth atmosphere are in downward directions what makes these things to get attracted towards the center of the earth always yes and uh, why indeed it is the gravitational force that always makes things fall in downward directions because of the earth is revolving around itself and rotating around the earth generally what are the fundamental forces in nature the basic fundamental forces of nature are one is gravitational force strong nuclear force weak nuclear force and electromagnetic forces and now some of the examples for the gravitational force here i am showing the satellites and the earth around the earth the moon is revolving and the satellites what we are keeping uh, in your orbits and gravitational force or the gravitation why do all the objects fall on the surface of the earth to answer this question we have to discuss historical discoveries about uh, a planetary motions while we are discussing about uh, the planetary motion then we need to remember the most important things of study of planetary motion by ptolemy which is in the form of the theory geocentric theory and aryabhatta heliocentric theory and uh, nicol nicolas copernicus also heliocentric theory and here the study of planetary motion tycho brahe and galileo galileo and johannes kepler these three members are supports the heliocentric theory and now geocentric theory is a uh, ptolemy introduced the geocentric theory all the celestial objects are uh, like stars the sun and all the planets revolve around the earth the only motion that was thought to be possible for celestial objects was motion in circle so here the ptolemy is the first person to introduce the geocentric theory for the world and complicated schemes of motion were put forward by ptolemy in order to describe the observed motion of planets here if you can see that the earth is at center and the remaining all the sun or all other planets are revolving around the earth so this is his assumption and he introduced and heliocentric theory this theory is introduced by aryabhatta in 5th century ad a greater indian indian astronomer aryabhatta mentioned in his research work about a heliocentric theory and also the same heliocentric theory has been proposed by copernicus 1000 years later so heliocentric theory means you know that the sun is at center the remaining all stars and planets are revolving around the sun and the comparison of geocentric and heliocentric theories so the earth is at middle in geocentric theory and in heliocentric theory the sun is at middle now you can see that here is the sun and here is the earth now all planets revolve around the earth is a geocentric theory all the other planets revolves around the sun in heliocentric theory these are the theories now in heliocentric theory our nicol copernicus proposed this theory and this theory states that the earth and all remaining planets revolve around the sun the drawback of this theory was the sun was thought to be at a fixed position in the center now coming to the mcqs in the previous session of our video the first question here i am going to give that the geocentric theory was given by option a copernicus option b kepler option c newton option d ptolemy so here the answer is ptolemy i given in this slide ptolemy is the person introduced geocentric theory for our world i given in this session 
Now the second question, heliocentric theory was given by whom? The options are Copernicus and uh, Kepler and uh, Newton and Ptolemy. So who is the answer? Copernicus. So I given in this slide, Nicholas Copernicus proposed heliocentric theory. And then Kepler's first law of planetary motion. Let me go to discuss the Kepler's laws. The Kepler's laws of first law is the orbit law. Kepler's second law of law of area. Kepler's third law is law of periods. Now, the Kepler's law of planetary motion. Before we study Kepler's laws, let us understand some concepts of ellipse. Otherwise, we are not able to understand the ellipse. So generally, the ellipse has two axes. One is major axis and another one is minor axis. And here in this ellipse, the, this is called semi-minor axis and this is called semi-major axis. And now, if you understand the study of uh, ellipse by the uses of ellipse of two focus and these names are F1 and F2 which are represents and if you observe that why we are considering the two focus means uh, in Kepler's first law or law of orbits the each and every planet moves around the sun in elliptic orbit. Now you can see that why and how the earth is revolving. Let me go to discuss now. See here. And now here I am going to analyze the focus sun place. It is F1 and the earth is in ellipse, elliptical orbit. Now the distance between the sun and earth is I considered as R and here the focus of the first sun location is S1 and there is F2. Now here F1 and F2 are the focus of uh, the ellipse and the distance of the earth uh, from the center of the sun is uh, R. And here A2O is a semi-major axis and C2O is a semi-minor axis. And uh, actually perihelion means what and perigee means what in ellipse. So here this is the most important thing. The perihelion and the uh, perigee means the distance of the closest approach of the planet with sun from the distance between P and S uh, is called perihelion or perigee. In the same way, what is the meaning of apihelion or apogee means when the distance between the greatest distance between A to S that means Earth to the planet, the distance is called apihegi as shown in diagram. Now the MCQs from the last session. The first law of Kepler is also called as what law? One is a law of orbit, law of period, law of area and law of gravitation. Here the answer is law of orbit which I provided. Now every planet revolves around the sun in elliptic orbit with the sun at one of its foci is started as. Options law of period and law of orbit and the third option is law of area and fourth option is law of gravitation. What is the answer now? Here the law of orbit. Now the Kepler's second law of planetary motion. Now here Kepler's second law of planetary motion here the sun is at center and the planet is at some of the distance with the radius vector from the sun R. Now the planet is revolved from one of the location now suppose the planet travels uh, for some distance in a finite time so now what is the area A1 with respect to the covers with respect to the sun it covers A1 area. Now if you consider another sum of the position in elliptic orbit, in this finite time it covers an area of A2 with respect to the sun. Now this area I considered as A2. Now this area A1 and A2 according to Kepler's laws since time taken by the planet is same their area covered is also the same. That means the radius vectors drawn from the sun to any planet which equals to equal areas and equal time intervals. This law is known as law of area and the law of areas can be understood as consequence of law of conservation of angular momentum. The law of conservation of angular momentum is valid for any central forces. A central forces is that force on a planet which is along the vector joining the sun and the planet. Now, 
proof of law of areas a planet moves in elliptical orbit from the position a to position b in delta t time interval so in this time interval the angle made by the planet is theta or and the radius vector is r bar of t now the similar time interval delta t from a to b now it's a uh, moving like this now the r of t is delta t in this time interval it is the arc length which is called as r into delta theta and now that delta theta we need to find that means here the area delta area means uh, the covered area is equals to half into r cross r dot del theta that is equals to 1 by 2 r square delta theta now in this equation delta a by delta t is equals to with respect of delta t equation will become uh, when we are dividing then 1 by 2 r square into delta theta by delta t we know that delta theta by delta t is equal to angular velocity angular displacement by time is equal to angular velocity so delta a by delta t is equals to r square of half 1 by 2 r square into omega which is called as angular velocity so we know that l equal to m v r but v equal to r omega so that equation already we know that here we know when we are considering l is equals to here we know that m v r one second here we are going to discuss about uh, this one now here we know that l is equals to m v r but we know v is equals to r omega by substituting v equal to r omega here we are getting r square omega square so based on that here we are getting l is equal to m r square omega therefore omega is equal to l by r square but we know half r square into omega so delta a by delta is equal to l by 2m and da by dt or delta a by delta t is equal to constant and now let me go for the next slide here here the gravitations which are mvr which is coming from the bohr's uh, bohr's equation so here v is inversely proportional to r and ra is directly proportional to rp similarly va is uh, less than vp angular momentum is a constant in this form now let me go for the next session if the speed of the earth more at perihelion than at aphelion means now M mcqs which last states the line joining the sun and the earth sweeps out equal areas in equal time intervals kepler's first law kepler's second law kepler's third law and law of gravitation here the answer is kepler's second law and now let me go for the next question the motion of planet in the solar system is an example of conservation of a mass linear momentum angular momentum and energy answer is angular momentum that i previously i showed that now kepler's third law the kepler's third law of uh, periods law also we can also say that the square of the time for planet to complete one revolution around the sun is directly proportional to the cube of semi major axis of the elliptical orbit which is called as t is directly proportional to l cube and this is the elliptical orbit and this is the sun and this is the planet which is revolving around the one revolution around the sun in elliptical motion now the distance between the sun and the planet is r which is uh, at focus f1 then t square is equal to r t square is equal to constant into r cube r t square by r cube is equal to constant where r is the semi major axis of elliptical orbit and kepler's third law of planetary motion let me go for to revolving about uh, the earth around the sun we know that the planet move in this uh, elliptical motion let t be the time taken by the planet to complete one revolution like this and uh, let r be the semi major axis of the ellipse uh, from its center then t square is directly proportional to r cube then t square by r cube is equal to constant this is the third law of uh, planetary motion so the planetary motion uh, is also called as harmonic law of period of law so this is also called period of law now mcqs according to the third law of kepler's law 
t square is directly proportional to r square t square is directly proportional to r cube t square is directly proportional to r answer is t square is directly proportional to r cube and this are already described in this slide the second question according to kepler's uh, a satellite always revolves in uh, an dash a circular orbit elliptical orbit parabolic orbit hyperbolic orbit always in elliptical orbit thank you